Now, when it comes to getting a glossy, smooth finish on your 3D prints, there are about a zillion different ways to go about that. And in fact, I've covered a lot of them here on the channel in previous videos. However, today we are going to be trying something that I have never tried before. And I'm honestly not too sure how well it's going to work, but it's based on a popular Reddit post that I saw from a handful of months ago, which is using beeswax paste on our 3D prints. Worst case scenario, I think I could use this in my hair as hair product. <laughs> Now I'm frequently on Reddit as one does and saw a really popular post pop off by a user going by the name of Azazel showing how he had 3D printed a coffee bean scooper and smoothed it out with this beeswax paste. And as you can see in the clip here, this looks like it's something like a molded piece of plastic, not something that was actually 3D printed. And I'm gonna test out this exact process to see if it's worthwhile you trying it out for some of your projects. And it just so happens that I've gone and 3D printed a hand handful of these coffee bean scoopers with my Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus 3D printer, which just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Elegoo is the maker of some fantastic, affordable 3D printers that not only can print fast, but again, aren't going to break the bank when it comes to picking up one of these for yourself. They also make some really incredible and affordable filament that if you haven't tried it, you definitely should be trying these on your other 3D printers. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. And for the beeswax paste, I ended up just ordering this directly from Amazon based on a link from Azazel over on Reddit that had used for their project. So this is, should be the exact one-to-one -one beeswax that they were using. And then the other thing that we're gonna need, unfortunately, is sandpaper. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to get away from sanding our prints smooth. However, we're not gonna be priming the prints or anything like that or trying to use primer filler. This is just gonna be straight using sandpaper directly on the prints and seeing how smooth we can get them by starting from somewhere around 150 and working our way way up to 400, 600, up to 1,000 and, and 1,500, mixing in wet sanding along the way. And then obviously we're gonna need our 3D printed coffee bean scoopers. And I have to say, these printed at 0 0.20 layer height look fantastic off of the Neptune 4 Plus. These are so smooth and are gonna give me a great starting point for the sanding. And I really wasn't sure if I should be trying to print these at a lower layer height, but the 0.2, the prints are looking really good. I also have a very faint amount of stringing on some of the prints and then on one of them here with this galaxy black from Elegoo, it was just stringing like crazy. So we're gonna get that cleaned up. And to do that, we'll be using one of my new favorite tools from the Hacksmith. These are so fun. And if you don't have one of these blow torches, you can just use a heat gun or a hair dryer. Those will work just as fine as well. And since I used PLA for my prints, I'm gonna be starting out at 150 grit. This should be a low starting point to get me going with smoothing it out, but not too low where it's gonna be eating away at the plastic. I'm also applying just a light amount of pressure as I'm sanding on these prints here. Again, I'm trying not to eat away too much into the plastic. I'm just trying to smooth out any of the visible layer lines. And here's what it looks like after the first pass of sanding with the 150 grit sandpaper. This was maybe two minutes of sanding. And one weird thing I'm noticing after this initial sanding is part of the print is light gray and now the other part in the nose tip area is a darker color there. If you have any idea why it turned out that way, let me know in the comments. I'm honestly very curious. I should also mention that anytime that you're doing any sanding, it's a good idea to wear some sort of a protective face mask so that you're not breathing in any of the particles from whatever it is that you're sanding. And there is typically an exception to that when we get to it, which will be wet sanding. Now let's jump up to 220 grit. And next up is 400 grit. At this point, if you really wanted to, you could start the wet sanding process. I typically don't start that unless I'm at 600 or 800. So with this 400 grit, you should definitely start feeling the print becoming a lot smoother as you're progressing with your sanding. All right, so now that we're done with the official dry sanding phase, we're gonna move on to the 600 grit sandpaper and introduce wet sanding. And if you've never done this before, it's really simple. You no longer need the mask anymore, which is fantastic, but you're gonna need some kind of container that you're gonna pour some water in. You can drop in a, a drop or two of dish soap if you want to add a little bit of a lubricant in there. Then we're gonna get our sandpaper wet and start sanding away. I'd also recommend wearing some gloves in this process. Wet sanding is also the trick to getting any replica prop nice and glossy smooth. You just gotta keep going up in the sandpaper grit. Also, you might wanna consider doing this outside because it can kind of be messy. 
and this is already so much smoother. And at 1000 grit, you should start to see a reflection in your prints. And then we're gonna use 1500 grit. Now, you could stop your sanding at this point. However, I'm gonna continue and move on until 2000 grit. And after all of your wet sanding is completed, you can throw out that bucket of dirty water and then you wanna rinse off and clean those prints to help remove any excess particles that might remain on them. And then you're gonna to need to let your print dry out. So depending on your environment, my prints took about an hour to two hours to completely dry out. And just to make sure that they were thoroughly dry, I let them sit here overnight. And now it's time for us to apply some beeswax paste to them. However, before you go off and do that, you should double check to make sure that everything feels really nice and smooth. If there are any rough spots on your prints, this is the time you wanna go back through and re-wet sand those areas down. Now I have four of these bowls that have been thoroughly sanded down, however, I also wanna test out applying some of this wax paste to a raw PLA print. So there's no sanding that's been done to this whatsoever. So I figure I'd go through the entire process of wiping these all down and applying a little bit of that beeswax paste to them. And no, you don't need to heat this up and melt it, although that does sound kinda of cool to see if you could pour it over these prints. All right, I'm just gonna take a cloth and I'm gonna rub it into the surface of the beeswax paste here to get some on the surface of the cloth. And let's start wiping it on. I'm just trying to apply a thin coating onto the surface here of our print and then just rubbing it in. And then we're gonna let this sit here to fully dry out before we apply another coating of it. And depending on how much wax paste you put on your prints, it's gonna determine how long it's gonna take for that to dry. I let mine sit here for about 20 to 25 minutes and they are pretty much dry to touch. So I'm gonna take a, cl a clean towel and I'm just gonna buff them here as following the directions that I saw on the can. And then we're gonna apply a second coating to all of these bowls. At this point, you can continue to add as many coats as you'd like to the object. And in this case, I've applied two coats to these little cups. And let's take a look at the results of our bees wax paste test with our 3D prints. And first up is the black PLA print. And this is so glossy and smooth. I'm honestly kind of amazed at how soft and smooth we were able to get this just by doing wet sanding and then applying this bees wax paste to it. I can even see my reflection directly in the print. Now, I can still see scratch marks in this and from the sanding process and even some layer lines from the print, but it is so incredibly smooth to touch. And something like an auto body compound would probably have done a better job of getting out those fine scratches in the surface of the print. And again, you see that weird little uh, line separation between the front and the back half of the print. This white one looks stunning. Like it feels stunning. It looks stunning. And obviously the white is going to be a lot harder to see the layer lines that it's a 3D print. And if someone just handed this to me, I don't even think I would have considered it being a 3D printed object. It is so smooth to the touch and it just really seamlessly hides any of those seams thanks to all of this process here. And this is the Midnight Black Filament from Elegoo that has a bit of glitter mixed in with it. And I thought it was gonna pop a good bit more with this wax paste. And unfortunately it just did not. And again, went all the way up to 2000 grit, wet sanding this. It's still ridiculously smooth for just starting with a raw print, working its way up, and then putting this wax coating over it. The color looks great. I just thought it was gonna pop a little bit more. Now this is Witchcraft PLA from Cookie Cad. This is probably one of my absolute favorite filament colors that is out there. It's such a vibrant purple glittery filament. And this one I definitely think pops a good bit more than the others. However, you can still see some of those fine scratch marks in the surface of the print. Now, just for comparison, I did take a raw 3D print of one of these cups and ended up applying four coats of beeswax paste to it. It is definitely a lot smoother than just the standard raw filament print. It is nowhere near as smooth as the one that I went through and did all of that fine sanding work on. This one, I think maybe with like 
I don't know, eight coats of the beeswax paste, maybe it'll be even smoother. It's kind of hard to tell. It definitely seeps in more to the seams of your print as you're continuing to apply coats to it. It's honestly pretty smooth, not as smooth as this one, but the results for just a quick wipe down with this paste is kind of impressive. Now, there was no way that I was gonna attempt this project without doing some sort of cosplay test for this. So I 3D printed this Dr. Doom mask on the Neptune 4 Plus, and I ended up taking that same mask and printing it twice so that I can do the comparison of the raw printed version versus one that I have completely sand smoothed down to 2000 grit and then applied two coats of the wax paste too. And obviously this one is significantly smoother and glossier than the raw print. However, you can definitely still see those layers through this. Now you can't actually feel them. It's so smooth to touch. It's one of these little experiments that I wasn't really sure how the results would work with this. I wasn't sure if it was gonna really help even out the color of the filament or if we're gonna see the gradual stepping of the 3D print directly in this file. So it is still really smooth and it has a really cool effect that might be worthwhile for a project that you're attempting to do. But I don't think I would recommend this over the traditional method of finishing your 3D prints, especially if you're gonna end up painting them. I would say this method works really well if you're not planning on ever painting the project and you're looking to retain it as the raw printed look that it is, but just give it a more glossy, smooth touch. And take this last bit with a grain of salt, but adding this beeswax paste to your 3D print should help further ensure that it is food safe. I know there's a lot of debate around 3D prints and being food safe, but for this use case of using it with coffee beans and this little cup canister, I am more than satisfied with this. But the one thing I think I'm most impressed by with this project is something that I've never tried tried before and it wasn't the beeswax paste. It's just taking a raw 3D print and sanding it all the way through up to, you know, 1,500 grit or 2,000 grit sandpaper and seeing how smooth you can get this without using any primer filler. I was kind of shocked that this worked as well as it did. I wasn't really anticipating that to work because every project that I've ever done, I've gone up to about 220 grit and then would apply primer filler and then continue the sanding process and repeat and repeat until I've got a really smooth surface. Now, I did also wanna say thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like the 3D printer settings that I used for these 3D prints on my Neptune 4 Plus, you can find those over in my Patreon. And let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions on what I could potentially use this beeswax paste for, for other projects, or if there's other scenarios that you think I should go ahead and test out with this. It definitely has a lot of potential. I'm just not entirely sure it's better than anything that we've already been doing previously. Hey, thanks again for watching you all and I'll see you next time. Now I'm done editing the video and just about ready to post it. However, I can't get the idea out of my head about trying to melt down some of the beeswax and pouring it over 3D print and seeing how well this works. And I'm assuming it's not a really good idea at all. However, that's the entire point of this channel is for me to do all of these things so that you don't have to. Not only did I do a horrible job of pouring it out, but it also as expected cured really thick on top of the print.